Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today I would like to touch again. I won't go on a tangent. I would like to touch again the tangent cone. It's not really going on a tangent. It's pretty much in topic. Um, just yeah, forget it. And we're going to talk about tangent cones or rather how to compute them. So if you remember uh, your old school days where you were learning what actually is a tangent, uh, something like that. Um, it's good to have the geometric picture in mind, for sure it is, but then in practice, what really matters is somewhat how you can compute this. And for the tangent cone, it's not obvious from the definition at all, but there is actually a really simple way of computing it, and I hinted towards it in the previous video, and I just make it now super explicit. It's really easy, it's really nice to remember. It's one for your lifetime, that's how easy it is to remember, um, and easy to compute. And yeah, I just go through it in, in several examples. There are three different types of examples, and we'll just go through it. So the first type of example is something that is smooth anyway, like a parabola. And the tangent cone is the tangent. And we'll be more precise in a later video. But for now, it's just what it is. So the tangent to the parabola is clearly the, the x equals zero axis. Yeah? And the parabola formula that I'm this is using here is something like y squared, uh, y squared equals x, right? This is all, all I'm writing here, y squared equals x, uh, which is exactly this uh, type of little curve, the parabola. We all know what a parabola is. I hope you do know what a parabola is. And this is kind of very really nice. So it's smooth at the origin. The tangent cone is actually really a tangent, and it's just giving by setting x to zero. It's just a variety of interesting. I say that again. The tangent is again a variety. Uh, the tangent cone is again a variety and it's obtained by setting x to zero. And in this video, I really only care about tangents at the origin, uh, just in case you're wondering. I could I could do some other points by just shifting my picture. But in this video, just tangents at the origin. Okay, fine. Hopefully that example is reasonably familiar. So the tangent for a parabola, uh, the classical tangent, and uh, the tangent cone agree in this picture and yeah this is this kind of the smooth case so what happens if it's not smooth see here my favorite so the one with the double point uh, here's the equation and the tangent cone is this little crossing type thing and the crossing formula is this equation again type of the same thing happens uh the cone the tangent cone is not a tangent anymore it's not it's not a linear space but it's still given by a variety uh, the variety like this and it still is pretty good actually as an in, interpolation on the point here because as i tried to make a bit precise last time if you have a point that moves in from here you kind of get uh like eventually this line as a tangent right at each point you have a well-defined tangent something and the blue one will eventually turn into this part of the green line Similarly, if you move in the point from here, you have some tangent that looks like this, and eventually the it will turn into this one, and like the tangent cone kind of takes all the possible uh, directions to move into the point into account. And what I would like to highlight again is that we have a variety of the tangent cone given by, well, now we can actually see it already. It's part of the formula. Let's take a look here. X equals X is part of the formula. It just is here in the formula. And here, this is a bit clearer, maybe x squared minus y squared is actually in the formula already. And this indicates, which is really this beautiful thing here, that you can actually compute very easily the cone from the original formula. And you can. This is like the amazing part. So let's one, do one more example, where you have like a real singularity at the origin. So here you can't even think of a, a tangent at all, because you have just an infinite, uh, infinite of possible directions to put a tangent and the tangent cone is linear but it's not the tangent because there is no tangent at that point but it's still linear um and yeah well in this case the variety is this one fine and the tangent cone is given by this equation and you can see that this is actually somewhere in the original formula and now you might wonder how does this work in general not just this is essentially three examples to tell you the general story and in general, it uh, works as follows. So the tangent cone can be calculated as follows. So we take the initial term of our equation, 
which is the monomials of smallest degree. Maybe this one is the most obvious one. So we have degree 2, degree 2, degree 3. So the initial term is the monomials of lowest degree. So it's 2 and 2. Yeah? You just drop the ones of higher degree. That's what you do. You take the initial term. So let, let's say your variety is f1 up to fk. And then your cone is just the initial terms of everything in the ideal. And it has one technical catch. It's not quite true. So what I usually would like to write is it's the cone is equal to f1 to the i up to uh, f4 is k to the i. That's not quite true. That's just true if you have one generator in your ideal. So in all of my examples, it was true. I really just need to take the equation, uh, take its initial term, and that's my equation for the cone. In general, it's a bit more difficult. You need to take the variety spent by everything in the ideal and it's somehow a good question to find kind of correct generators of the ideal. But anyway, the idea is the same, you kind of take the generator. It's not quite true, but essentially the same. You take the generators of the ideal, you take the monomials of lowest degree, and you sort of, in other words, set the other way around, you forget the higher degree terms, and that's um, your code, the tangent code. It's a really easy way to compute the tangent code. And you might wonder why this actually works. Well, if I just take the polynomials of lowest degree, I clearly get a homogeneous polynomial, right? and as you can always see it here on this side. Homogeneous polynomials correspond to projective spaces. That was one of the uh, main messages of what are projective spaces, and projective spaces correspond to cones. This is where the name comes from. This is why this is really topologically, not topologically, geometrically uh, a cone. I hope this procedure is reasonably easy. It's kind of surprisingly easy in some sense. Uh, because the definition of a cone wasn't actually all that easy. And it's really something you can remember. As I said, one for your lifetime. You just take the things of lowest degree. Whatever variety you get from it um, is your cone. And that's almost true. I say it again. There's this little catch with the generators in if you have more than one. But kind of, let's let's ignore that. Let's just pretend life is, life is good. Let's just pretend life is good. Life is not good. Life is a piece of shit when you look at it. But let's just pretend it is. In particular, in the one generator case, it actually is okay. okay. Hopefully, that's reasonably clear, right? And you might wonder, and we'll discuss that in the following videos, uh, before we move on to modern mathematics, sorry, not modern mathematics, modern geometry, whatever that is. But anyway, so you might wonder, how good is this actually, um, cost, how good is it actually as a tangent type space? Well, the first thing you observe is, it's the lowest order possible approximation, if you want. So the lowest order here is 2. So the best approximation should be in order 2, or so kind of the best ignoring the higher uh, term should be in order 2 approximation. And it does exactly that. Um, and in some cases, namely when it smooths, it is the linear approximation. It is the tangent. And here, note that it is, it is a line, but it's not really linear. There's a square here, which you kind of can't see in the variety. This is kind of a little bit disappointing um, kind of fact about varieties where we somehow need to work we need to work on that eventually but for now just observe that this is not linear it's like a square although it looks linear so whenever it's really linear like here it, it, it's just really the tangent and otherwise it's still a good approximation uh, onto your space and yes it's often not linear that's it's, it's still the best one and in particular something that is that is kind of a a crucial property of the cone is it is always of the expected damage. So if you know um, like something like a smooth manifold, if you don't know what a smooth manifold is, it doesn't matter. Let's take the sphere uh, and you have the notion of a tangent on the sphere, then you will observe that the sphere is actually two-dimensional and the tangent is a plane in this case, so it's two-dimensional. So it's kind of a, a non-trivial but really beautiful fact of uh, kind of classical Geometry? No, that's, that's not the right word. Of smooth geometry, let's say differential geometry, something like that, that um, on a manifold, the tangent space always has a correct, the same dimension as, a, as the manifold itself. And that's also true for the code. So it's kind of the, whenever you don't have a notion really of a tangent, like in this space, this case, so in this case, both are one dimensional. Yeah, just note that both are one dimensional. You kind of get a, a good the best possible if you want 
uh, replacement by taking the initial terms, the lowest order uh, degree polynomials to approximate those guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.